Hey, happy Friday to all. Almost we are on the verge of being our best and start the weekend afresh. Lou Brutus meant great while he commented that music sounds always better on Friday. Well, I say so does a podcast. What do you say about this? Apt moments to weave the beautiful week ahead in a colorful yarn of actions, dreams, wishes. Now before you sparkle more in the sunny, smiley weekend, embrace the topic of the day, the topic of today's Friday, which is the therapeutic drug monitoring and it is famously abbreviated as capital T, capital D and capital M. Let the rigmarole commence. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult Podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your mind, is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Okay, firstly, my goal of today is to thoroughly comment upon the capital T, capital D and capital M, therapeutic drug monitoring. Let's define it. It is the old custom, the old ritual of ours. TDM is simply the measurement of specific medications or their metabolites and their levels in the blood circulation and that too at the timed breaks or intervals and the basic goal is to maintain a relative desired constant level or concentration of the drug or medicine in the blood hope you understood everything that i have meant to make you understand right The main point of concern are the drugs with the narrow therapeutic range. Yes, I mean to talk about the drugs like aminoglycosides, antibiotics, digoxin, lithium, phenytoin, theophylline, rifampine, warfarin, cyclosporin, etc. It's highly important to ensure that amount of medicine or drug is not only safe but it should also be effective. What is the sense if it's not effective? And sometimes you have to be very careful because these are the drugs that can be very easily underdosed and they can be very easily overdosed. Now I will be enlisting few special states where TDM is of utter value and importance. First, it's quite easily guessed. Yes, in case of the drugs with low safety margin, I gave you a list just now and to add in this list, let's talk about more drugs like anticonvulsants, antiarrhythmics, tricyclic antidepressants. So add them in the list I just gave you. Second important state or condition is in the state of poisoning or toxicity of the drugs. Now third important state when you need TDM is when there are large person to person variations. And that especially in the case of the drugs like antidepressants and lithium. Next important condition, renal failure states. And there are few drugs that may actually turn out to be very, very toxic like vancomycin, aminoglycoside antibiotics, etc. Next important condition is in the case of few antimicrobials. They may fail to respond. And you know, without any apparent reason okay next important state in the cases when the patient compliance is checked especially i'm talking about when you administer the psychopharmacological agents so these are some of the very five or six conditions or states when you actually need to perform the therapeutic drug monitoring now when i talk about the therapeutic drug monitoring or the tdm There are some few of the critical steps and the most important is choosing the right interval or the time duration between the ad 
administration of drug and the drawing out of the blood sample for a particular drug. And you know this actually depends upon two important factors. The first one is the purpose or the goal of the TDM and the second one is the characteristics or the nature of the drug. Now let's talk about the goal of the TDM. The goal of the TDM it can be varied, it can be many. Now I want to make it very clear with the help of few examples. If you are performing TDM to analyze the drug dose, the different conditions can be first condition if the drug has to act continuously I mean the drug has to be very long acting it is important to measure the trough steady state blood levels of the medicine you need to do it just before you give the next dose got it okay second important state if the drug is short acting now in that particular state the drug is achieving intermittent levels in the blood and these drugs can be something like ampicillin, gentamicin, etc. So it's always a good choice to do sampling just after the drug absorption. That is around 1-2 to two hours after you give the drug via oral route or intramuscular route. And then when you perform the TDM that gonna reflect the peak concentration of the drug. Third important condition, when there's a case of poisoning, you need to work real quick. You cannot be slow in the, such a situation. The blood sampling should be done very early to estimate the drug amount in the blood. Now why to do that very quick? Because that will help to ascertain the state of the poisoning and also you can determine and monitor the poisoning severity. Actually, when you do repeated sampling, then it is very easy to monitor the drug clearance at further time intervals, especially in the affected individual. And yes, there is always a need to quickly help in the drug elimination while certain procedures like hemodialysis. Lastly, I want to state that random drawing of the blood sample can be very helpful and it provides a lot of information. To check the drug compliance in a patient so you can really perform that and before I seal my conversation for the Friday one more area to cover in the regard of TDM is what is that time what is that moment when you actually don't need to go for TDM and let's get to know such states or conditions quickly because why to perform TDM in vain? First, when the drug response is measured very easily, as in the case of antihypertensives, oral anticoagulants, hypoglycemic drugs, etc. Secondly, when the drugs are activated in the body, like liver dopa. Thirdly, when the drug possesses irreversible action, like phenoxybenzamine, organophosphate, and anticholinesterases. Fourthly, when the drugs are actually the hit and run drugs. Have you heard about hit and run drugs? What do you mean by hit and run drugs? Well, it means the drug effect is lasting much longer than the drug itself. That is, the drug has actually vanished from the site of administration but its effect is still there. That is the condition when you call a drug as hit and run drugs. And yes. Nothing is completed without the examples. These drugs are omeprazole, monoamine oxidase inhibitors and recipine. And yes, there are more, but these are the main ones that I want to comment upon. So far, these situations are there. Never, never perform the TDM. It is simply in vain. Hope you understood well. Was I able to make the Friday chat comprehensive? Well, do let me know your ideas about it. Till we continue our talks further, let's give ourselves a good break and here we depart for the wacky, witty, wonderfully, willy weekend. Have a great one in true sense in your own wishful way. For all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast, do visit www.isfarmecologydifficult.com. 
where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name as Pharmacology Difficult. If you are listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.